Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Rangers Review Morning Briefing for Monday, the 13th of March. I'm Derek Clark, and I'm joined this Monday by Joshua Barry. How are we doing, Joshua? Good, Derek. Yeah, obviously, lots to talk about. Not all of it. Yesterday's game, which uh, wasn't the most entertaining I've been to, but I'm sure we'll, we'll make something to talk out of it. Yeah, and there's plenty to talk about when it comes to Rangers and all of it, not entirely the match yesterday. Um, lots of other issues that we'll get our teeth stuck into uh, throughout the course of the show. Before we do that, folks, um, just a little bit of housekeeping as ever. You can see the ticker below us if you're watching us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter this morning. Um, you can subscribe to the Rangers Review for just £2 for two months' worth of content. Head over to rangersreview.co.uk forward slash subscribe for all the details. Only £2.99 per month thereafter. It is an absolute bargain uh, with the content you receive. I assure you, you won't be disappointed. If you want to subscribe to your YouTube channel, uh, nearing 12,000 subscribers now, you can do that. That's totally free. Uh, click on the bell. It means you'll never miss a video when we go live. Uh, and a quick word as well to our sponsor, Seneca Hair Restoration, the top dogs when it comes to hair transplants and the likes. Uh, so if you want a Kamar roof, perhaps, or a, a dick advocate uh, for the, the older bears, the older generation, then these are the guys uh, to go to. And as ever, I've stuck the links in the description box. Uh, so do go check them out. Right, Joshua, I don't know where to start, really, with regards to what we're going to talk yeah. about uh, today. Let's, let's discuss... Uh, uh, a bit of uh, news late last night. Uh, the forgotten man, uh, Nandi Offabor, uh, posting a, 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 an image and a message on his Instagram uh, that certainly sparked a lot of debate. Of course, we've not seen him in action. He's been out uh, since signing from Bournemouth uh, back in a pre-contract back in uh, 2021. Um, but he posted uh, two images on his Instagram last night, uh, obviously uh, hooked up to uh different cables and all that obviously had health issues with an ecg flagging up a heart problem after his arrival at ibrox and he posted a message uh, with the caption two years two operations hundreds of appointments uh, and the midfielder shared a second image of himself undergoing a health test as he cited mistreatment he said uh, silent on the situation so i look like the bad guy all the mistreatment of the last two years will come out very cryptic, uh, Joshua. Uh, it's obviously created a lot of uh, debate on social media and the likes as to what it could be implying here. Um, what do you make of it all? For me, uh, looking at it from, from the outside, um, I, I, put, I, I actually asked Michael Beale about this in January and he did say he's away to, he, he, there's no one at Ibrox that can uh, deal with this properly, so he's been sent away to specialists and I think that's what he's, he's getting at um, as to try and get back to well, get his, his health sorted first and foremost before thinking about returning to the pitch. But what did you make of the, the post from Nambi last night? Yeah, obviously, um, I think it's kind of common knowledge, Derek, that he would have been treated by um, you know cardiac specialists um, probably all around Europe. And um, I think it's kind of common knowledge that that will have, will have probably been outsourced because um, of the how serious this issue is. I think, firstly, you've got to probably understand um, just how difficult a couple of years it's been for it, anyone to go through that. I think at his age, at any age, but also as well when it stops you from from doing your job, it stops you from launching a promising career. Um, you know, as as obviously we discussed way back uh, when he first signed and and the exciting player that he did travel up the road. Um, as I believe, uh, from what I'm told at the moment, Derek, that he's still a Rangers player, contrary to reports. I think it's something that Michael Beal will have to to clear up at the press conference, which will be yeah. uh, on, on Thursday or Friday of this week to kind of clear up those comments. But I, th I think you've got to also obviously give him the kind of benefit of the doubt that it will have been such an emotionally kind of testing couple of years from him uh, for him. And it's something probably that we can't really comment on with, with much certainty, apart from knowing that, as I say, to my knowledge, at, at the moment, he is still a Rangers player. Um, it's something that, that B will, uh, I'm, I'm sure, clear up at the press conference on, on Thursday or Friday. Yeah, no doubt he will be asked uh, about it. We did see him at the, the League Cup final. And 
Um, I'm sure he'd it, 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 be itching to get back on the field and play yeah. football. Um, he's, he's, he was a highly rated player, still is, of course, but will uh, we see him in the Rangers jersey remains to be seen. But yeah, that was a post last night, folks, from, from Nandi Offerbore uh, on his uh, Instagram. And, and an interesting point raised from, from Denzel. He says, uh, having suffered an unexpected diagnosis, heart diagnosis, I know how the lad feels. It's a real shock to the system. His head will be all over uh, the place. Um, yeah, listen, he's not been able to do what he loves for, for uh, two years now, he says. So um, it's one of those ones, but uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, a real, it's a real shame for the lad. And I hope we can get back uh, play, playing, uh, whether it's at Rangers or, or anywhere else at, at some point. But yeah, you, Josh is right. He's still contract, he's still a Rangers player. Um, uh, and yeah, it's one that I'm sure Michael Beale will be asked about in his uh, press conference later on this week. Um, let's look to the game yesterday, Joshua, then. Uh, cup progression, always uh, vital when, when you reach this stage of the competition, or any stage, I guess. Uh, yeah. Not the most scintillating of performances from Rangers. Wraith uh, set up with a game plan, rightly so. Ian Murray said that if they open up, they would get picked off, and I don't blame him for that. I think he would have done the same. Uh, Rangers huffed and puffed uh, in the end. They made one change on Lundstrom coming in for Ryan Jack. Um, goal coming from Connor Goldson, a header. Uh, that's three in three games for, for Big Connor. He's, he's becoming prolific, even though one of them was yeah. in, in the wrong goal in, in midweek. Um, then, of course, uh, Rangers uh, racked it up in the second half. An own goal, a tremendously taken own goal, it has to be said, from, from the Wraith defender from Atavia. Yeah. Cross into the box. And then uh, uh, Arfield wrapped up a good move between Hadji Catwell. Uh, and uh, Arfield, we'll talk about the, the Union Bear uh, row in a minute, Joshua, but the game itself, um, what did you make of it yesterday? Yeah, I mean, uh, Beal said going into the game that, that styles make games and only one team can set the tempo and it's a game like that. You're right, Derek, that's not a criticism of Wraith because I think they defended better than some Premiership teams do when they come to, to Ibrox. I think Rangers didn't help themselves with the, the pace of the play because of the way Wraith defended um, Rangers crossed the ball into the box. I think it was well over thirty times, which is which is well over the average of what has been under Michael Beale. Such was the kind of just number of bodies in and around the eighteen yard box. And and Beale said in the post match press conference, you know, teams that spend millions and millions of pounds struggle in, in those types of games. And he, and he's right. Um, there was only one change in the team from the game against Hibs, but it was a totally different performance because the pace of the game was totally different. You know, if, if you think of a game like that Hibs game, both teams are trying to make it fast and frenetic and, and, and attack quickly. Whereas in a game like yesterday, one team is doing everything they can to slow the pace of the game down and one team is trying to, to make it quicker. So naturally, you're going to get a slower game, as, as we all alluded to. That is something obviously Rangers will have to improve in. Um, going forward because they're going to face a lot more games like that, uh, especially going into to next season. Um, and, but after a summer, you'd imagine that Beal will have them a better versed um, to, to break down uh, defensive blocks, which I'm sure to my mind he said at one point that that's kind of the most difficult thing, uh, the most kind of difficult game state to manage because it is all about kind of creating space before you create any chances. With, with that said, set pieces become all the more important and although Rangers are never in jeopardy of, of losing that game yesterday Derek um, that's two games in a row at Ibrox, Kilmarnock and Wraith Rovers where teams have come to sit in that they've managed to open the scoring by way of a, a set piece it was something that towards the start of the season Rangers weren't strong enough in everyone obviously remembers that game against St Johnston where I think Rangers had 20 corners and couldn't break the deadlock if they do in that game it becomes a, a totally different story they could be uh, closer in the league similarly I think the home game against Livingston it was 16 or 17 um, corners as well so to be posing a, a better threat from those moments is obviously a real positive um, the, the main thing is I think the Rangers are through to the semi-finals after three games in a week but yeah it wasn't the, wasn't the most entertaining of uh, afternoons no, I, I, I sort of envisage it, it would be the case where they would have to break down a stubborn defence and it proved to be uh, the case as well. Some interesting points being raised here in the comments. We'll get to a few of them. Uh, Dave Fulton, first of all, morning, Dave. Uh, any word on Ben Davis got me worried when he knew treatment late on. Of course, it, it, it was uh, attended to. Uh, Josh, he did come back on the pitch. Um, I don't think there's anything major to worry about, but yes, it's, it's one of those ones. We know he's had his injury problems to seek and the season that we've had this year, um, you can understand a bit of anxiety from supporters when you see Ben Davis going down. Yeah, but he's also, I think it's really 
December since he had any of those issues. Uh, point, he's, yeah. re- he's really played every game since under Michael Beal and and played it really well. I mean, it's a, a conversation we can have at some point, Derek, but I think you're starting to see the best of Ben Davies and how much he can bring um, on the ball. But no, no mention of that post-match or, or anything. So uh, I'm sure he'll be fine going into to next week's game. Yeah, David Brown raising the point here. He says, even at 2-0 down, Rafe still didn't have a go. It's a cup game and you have nothing to lose, so why not come out? Also, their time-wasting head injuries uh, was embarrassing. Uh, so having a go at uh, Ian Murray's men uh, yesterday. Um, I think funny. it was never in doubt. One sec, Connor Goldson get, gets the first, uh, Josh. Uh, and, and Mick, the fact Michael Beale played that strong team, he did say uh, in his pre-match press conference he would be playing the strongest team Possible, of course. He did mention that Ryan Jack has had uh, just managing that calf issue that he's had for for yeah. some time. Um, what did you make of John Lundstrom's performance? Of course, the one change from the side to the starting lineup. Yeah, well, I, I think first it's quite harsh and Rafe because you know obviously you just compare the resources and uh, yes, the two 0 down you'd expect them to come out a bit, but when Rangers have space, they're going to be a much better team to play in. Um, and and to be fair again to Rafe, they really limit Rangers. Uh, until that third goal, I can't think of many times where they were car- carved open in open play. Um, obviously, you can see by way of a, a set piece and, and then that kind of unfortunate deflection, which was it would have been some finish if it was the other way around. Um, no no surprise that Jack doesn't play because he started two games in a week. I thought Lundstrom was, was fine. I thought he could see that he was really trying. He got a, a yellow card um, for overstretching for a ball. I, I don't always think those games suit him as well. Again, when it's about mm. setting the tempo from the base of midfield and getting the midfield ticking. Equally, it's, I think it's a difficult game to, to stand out in and, and really impress because not many Rangers players did yesterday. I thought Cantwell was deservedly man of the match. I thought Davies was was really good as well. Um, Barisic, although he crossed the ball a lot, he crossed it pretty well. Aside from that, there, there wasn't many good performers. You look at Cholak and Sakala, so good in midweek. I don't think they had their, their best game. And Although Beal wanted to keep that continuity... Um, and the team, they obviously weren't able to, to kind of match the tempo of midweek. But yeah, Lundstrom did fine. I, I just don't think that game always suits him um, as best as a game like that performance away at Tynecastle. I know he didn't play in midweek at, at Easter Road, uh, uh, Derek. But um, yeah, the, again, it's a difficult game to impress in, isn't there? Because there's not that many. Um, there wasn't that many yesterday that, that, yeah. that did play really well. or, or they, they did their job and it kind of just yeah. had that feeling up until like even the 70 80 minute mark where there's just a recognition i think sometimes that games are gonna games are gonna be like that especially where rangers are in their development under their new manager and still without a pre-season i, I think you'll see and we have seen quite a few games like that maybe spare that um Kilmarnock first half when teams have come to ibrox and defended and, and, and sat in uh, games have, have kind of tended to fall in that pattern yeah uh, interesting point here from Barry Smith. Joshua says, uh, nice meeting you again, Joshua. Amber's famous pal. Did you yeah. uh, bump into some fans at the weekend, did you? Well, Amber Amber gave um, Man in a Match to Cholak yesterday, so I was telling her that was her, her confirmation bias because he's uh, he's her favourite player. But no, great to meet. Uh, chat to Amber and Barry again. And yeah, Man in a Match for me, I think that had to be probably Campwell, Derek, who... Mm. Um, Again, in a, in a game that didn't have that much excitement, I think continues to to show what promising player he's going to be um, going to be for Rangers, even if um, yeah there wasn't. I know he got that assist yesterday, and Michael Beale was saying in the post match press conference that he still wants him to to do a little bit more in the final thirds. But I think that's still his, his sixth or his seventh start, um, and I, I, I don't actually think I was on speaking after the, the Hibs game, Derek. But I thought he was just fantastic in there. You're seeing so much diversity to his game. Not only what he can bring on the ball, but his hard work off and the way he can keep the ball under pressure. So, uh, yeah, really enjoying watching him. I think him and Raskin in the middle of the pitch. That was their first 90 minutes together, I think. And Bill spoke about the importance of that as well. So, I guess that's a, a positive to to get them in that midfield, which they're going to, I think, will be built around them alongside Tillman going forward. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Let's get to a few more of the comments come in. First of all, before we touch on... Uh, I want to talk about Alfredo Morelos, Joshua, but Conor yeah. Fleming raises a point. Uh, I must say, guys, although Bonner has been good recently, I'm really excited Yilmaz has returned to the squad. Great to see him back in action, introduced uh, as a substitute. Uh, he came on alongside uh, John Sutton and Scott Arfield. I think it was uh, the, the subs that were made in that, that second half. Uh, just great to see him back in the Rangers jersey, yeah. Joshua. I think Bonner, for me, has been steady. Another, uh, he assisted uh, Conor Goldson with, with the goal, of course, on, on Sunday. And I've had no qualms uh, with him uh, really for, for, 
for, for a number of weeks now. However, it's good to have Red Van Yilmaz back, who for me is the future, you'd have to say. What is he, 21 years of age now? Yeah. A fair amount of cash being spent on him. Of yeah. course, he's had he had the worst possible hamstring injury, just to tie in with the, uh, such an unfortunate season injury-wise. Um, but just great to see him back in action. Yeah, Bill actually said uh, in his press conference that uh, Barisic, uh, his wife, is expecting, which is obviously uh, nice for him. Um, but he also said that might mean that there is a chance for Red Van. So wouldn't be too surprised mm-hmm. if he actually starts so away at Burr Park uh, next, was it next Saturday? Yes. Um, yeah, you know what you're going to get with Barisic. And I thought his delivery at points w- was brilliant. You know, Wraith obviously were happy to leave that space open to the full back, but then equally Rangers should have capitalised on it more. Um the manager saying that he wanted more from his forwards in certain moments when the ball went into that the, the box. Ridvan just plays the role differently. Um, we've spoken about it before. I, I think if Barisic is kind of the first iteration of a modern fullback crossing, providing with Ridvan's maybe the second where he's um, happier to, to play passes and he's not going to cross from deep, but he'll try and progress playing different ways, which... I think it's useful to firstly have that option, but I agree with you, Derek. I think going forwards, there's not much debate about who's going to be first choice because you look at the money that Rangers have spent there, the fact that he's an international at such a young age and, and has played so many games for uh, Besiktas at, at such a young age. Um, and, and Hadji and Suter both as well, I thought looked, looked good. Hadji looked sharp by the week. Um, yeah. Suter, you can see what he brings with his passing on the ball quite a few times. He tried to, to play through the lines and did so successfully. But yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Red Van does start next week just because of what Bill said in the presser. And um, I think the quicker that he gets up to speed after such a difficult few months um, it, it is a benefit. It, it just gives Rangers a totally different option uh, out there compared to Barisic, who his strength is really strong. You know, I don't think many people, if any, can cross the ball like him in, in, in the whole of Scotland. But also, it's at times a bit one-dimensional. He's not going to take the ball in, um, and, and play inside in the same way that Ridvan is. So to have that option, I think, is a, will be a benefit for Beal. And I'm sure he's looking forward to seeing what Ridvan can do. Because as you say, he was kind of the flagship signing of the summer. And yeah. it's now getting into March and we're yet to really see him in a run of games. Obviously, that's a bit circumstantial. But yeah, maybe that'll start against Motherwell next week. Yeah, right. Let's talk uh, Alfredo Morelos then. Um, you're going to write a piece uh, on the website, Joshua, regarding Michael's <coughs> comments uh, on El Buffalo. Uh, Stephen Cochran says uh, uh, the fact he didn't go to up top looks like the end for Alfredo, the perfect game uh, with all those crosses. A few comments coming in about uh, Morelos as well. Um, I'll touch on what Michael Beale said. Uh, of course, he was uh, heavily uh, rumoured to have signed a pre contract agreement with Sevilla which for me it would be an absolutely fantastic move for him, I've got to say, although yeah. in the current form, I think. Certainly a couple of years ago, I, um, I could see it. Uh, I know Sevilla are struggling in La Liga uh, this term, but uh, it's still a, a great move if, if that was to come off. Um, he was asked about this, uh, firstly on, uh, of course, uh, via play sport, Michael Beale says, in terms of the reports from the outside, I've not spoken to him about it. He's free to go and speak to other people. We've not spoke to him and offered him anything. We've not done anything with any of the out-of-contract players. We want to have a look and keep talking. Ryan Jackson, a place where I've said publicly I'd like him to stay, and the same with Ryan Kent. So that's above me, so you can communicate that. Alfredo's situation is slightly different. He's been in the club a long time, and I need to see a little bit more from Alfredo day in, day out. I think when he's played and the team has needed him, he's fine, but I want more energy in the final third. Can he provide that? If he can, he's a better option than what he's been in the last few months. I think that's fair. Everything I'm saying has been told to his face. Uh, What do you make of that, Joshua? Yeah, I mean, it's just kind of another entry into the long-running um, Morelos and Rangers yeah. soap opera. But, uh, you know, there's no, obviously, I think it's important to state there's no suggestion that he's not training well from Beal here or that uh, there's anything comparable to the start of the season, obviously, when he was left out for that game away at PSV. But I think what, what Beal's kind of touching on is that he's looking to the future. Everything at the moment needs to be geared towards how he makes a successful Rangers team uh, going forwards. And he knows that Cholak's going to be here. Um, because Cholak's contracted, obviously, next season and Morelos isn't. So y- you've got that. Um, and I think everyone saw, and we spoke about it last week, the way that Cholak played um, in, in both the games against Hibs and and, uh, and Kilmarnock and, and the way that this was the first real sight of him and Beal's system um, playing in that sort of style. And, and I think he looked really good. 
the, the most interesting comment to me is, is the energy comment, Derek. And I think it's easier to look at maybe what Cholak has done as opposed to what Morelos hasn't. Um, obviously, we can kind of take the manager's word from it, uh, word for it because he knows the two players better than than anyone probably and knows what they, they can bring. Um, if you look at the, the bare numbers, Morelos' pressures, possession-adjusted pressures, I think Cholak's averaged about three more. Now, he's obviously played less football under Beal, which could come into it. But I think if you look at that performance away at Hibs, and uh, we'll have a piece on the website that kind of takes all these arguments into consideration. Beal's post-match press conference, what did he keep coming back to? Off the ball work. He said everything started with off the ball. He spoke about energy, defending from the front, the fact that Rangers' attack and play was facilitated by the way they pressed and made the pitch small. A little details away that I think Cholak was so good at, at blocking the passes out wide, which means that Hibs have to play the ball forward in certain ways, which creates a space that Rangers have to can then go forwards and attack. Um, all these little details that I think are so important to the way that Beal plays, because you saw in that game against Hibs just how, I guess, cohesive they were as a unit off the ball. Now, that's not to say that Morelos definitely can't do that, but um, what Beal's alluding to is can he give more? And you'd have to expect that off the ball, the, the answer is yes, if that's you know the, the, the point that, that Beal is raising, um, obviously, on, on um, after the game yesterday. So it's, a, it's an interesting one, Derek, because it's not any way comparable to the start of the season. I don't think where he was left out and there was real attitude questions. Morelos obviously hasn't signed a new contract and it looks increasingly likely that he won't be here next season. Um, and I think compared to what Beal's saying, the energy that Cholak gives up top, um, that leads to those comments yesterday. So it's interesting to see where it goes from here because obviously there's still a couple of months to go. Maybe it's just Beal trying to get a last reaction out of Morelos and showing what he needs from him, from him in certain areas if he has to hand out what would be a really lucrative contract to keep him at the club. Um, but yeah, it's, it's hard not to read into these things, especially when you see him uh, com compared to those comments about uh, Kent and, and I think it was Ryan Jack just kind of in the same breath he'd, he'd said a moment before. Yeah, yeah, interesting comments from the, the Rangers manager on, on Sunday. Uh, what was great is DJ says, uh, Bill's still sticking by Roof, judging by his comments. Will he be a Rangers player next season, lads? Well, he's contracted to the summer of 2024, I believe. So, um, the issue with me for that, Josh, I think we spoke about this before, is who's going to who's going to sign him? Who's going to yeah. pay money uh, to take a, an injury prone player off, off Rangers' books? Um, I think Rangers are. Uh, we're going to have him until at least his, his contract runs out, um, unless he comes back fit and firing, which uh, remains to be seen, of course. But uh, I don't see him going nowhere, uh, just based on the fact that he's, I don't think he's an attractive proposition for teams. You see, if you look at his first two seasons, the minutes he played in his first two seasons, he still missed quite a lot of football. Off the top of my head, I want to say it was 10 match days in the league and, and nine the season after, but it was no way comparable to this season. Um, Rangers seemed to be able to manage his minutes in the first season he was here. He obviously finished the season really strongly. The second season, although he was out injured, having, I think, probably played too much football um, for for what we know he's used to. Because I think it was after, was it that Braga game and then the the Old Firm yeah. semi-final at the weekend that, yeah. that he, he pulled up in? Yeah. Um, he was obviously also out of favour for quite a lot that season, so he was available, but he just wasn't playing. This season is just another level because I think he's only actually made four match day squads in the league, and then now is is going to miss the rest of the season. The the, the news was that this is an a, an operation that should get to the roots of the injury, and you know you hear that quite a lot in football that if there's lots of niggling things, it can often be attached to one issue, and if you get that sorted out, then you're fine. But it's difficult to have any sort of positive spin on this purely because of the amount of football that Roof's missed. But I agree with you, Derek, it's who's going to take him on um, those wages. If you take Beal at his word, um, he has always kind of spoken Roof up since he came back in the building. We've seen in brief cameos or been reminded of what Roof can do. Um, maybe this gets to the root of the issues, but it's just all maybes. And I, I think if you go into next season, you need three strikers and can you depend on him? At the moment, on the body of evidence of this season, you have to say no. But yeah, the question is, how, how do you shift those wages, Derek? Because people say, well, just pay him up, but then you're still paying those wages that you're going to pay over the course of the season and then definitely not getting the potential few goals or, or whatever minutes he may be able to get you. And we don't know, maybe this will get to the root of the issue. It's just obviously difficult to say that when there's been so many injury layoffs since he, since he came to the club.
Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's get to a few more comments. Uh, we'll discuss the, the, the banner out the weekend as well shortly, folks. But I, I like this comment that's came in from Glasgow Rangers Nation. Uh, with Suter back, would you consider going a three at the back? Uh, he's went at McGregor, Suter, Goldson, Davis. Uh, he's, he's just rhymed off a whole team, I think, there. But uh, a Suter, Goldson, Davis back three, Joshua. Uh, would you be a fan of that? Well, uh, the manager raised it yesterday. I can't remember. I think it was in the via play interview. It's kind of yeah. all merges into one because there's so much, po so much post-match <laughs> media. Um, but he did, he did say that. Obviously, you've got Dave, uh, Davies and Suter who are both excellent at the, on the ball and can find the kind of striker's feet and play through. Goldson, who can um, really play that diagonal over over distance. So if you look at that back three as a kind of ball-playing trio, there, there's a lot to offer there. I guess the argument is, where do you need that? Um, maybe you take out a, a Jack or a Lundstrom and just play those three with a, a Rask and Tillman and a Cantwell and it gives them more freedom yeah. um, with Tavernier and Neil Maz out wide. Um, but it's telling that the manager mentioned that and it gives Rangers a different option. It would be great if Suter could, could kind of get a few games between now and the end of the season because, again, uh, Buell was speaking yesterday about the fact that he was a player he wanted Rangers to sign when he was at the club uh, last time yeah. round. Um, similar to Roof, obviously, it's a tired conversation of, of injury issues. Ross Wilson did say at the AGM that uh, Rangers thought they could kind of get to get to the bottom of those, but time will tell, Derek, because I think if this season shows anything, it's that we should not hold our breath and be optimistic about uh, about injuries on the basis of this season. Yeah, he's a good player. I've always said that. Uh, I was always impressed with him at Hearts, but again, like, like many players at Rangers, as a case of can they remain injury free um, and and play consistently? That is it, the big question. Um, right, let's touch on a big talking point from Sunday, Joshua. Um, no union bears at Ibrooks. Uh, they were yeah. staging a protest. Now, this was because they attempted to take a banner uh, depicting a police officer as a pig uh, into Ibrooks uh, for the clash. Um, the Rangers uh, said they banned them from from uh, bringing that that banner in. Um, so they decided to uh, remain absent uh, from the game. A club statement said that Rangers refused to allow an offensive banner relating to the police service to be displayed at today's match. The Union Bears elected to absent themselves from the stadium because the club would not permit the offensive anti-police banner uh, display. Um, apparently, uh, it can be revealed that the highly offensive banner showed a police officer mocked up as a pig alongside a 1-3-1-2 uh, an alternative to the ACAB slogan. Um, what do you make of this, Joshua? It's, uh, it's certainly uh, noise that is uh, unnecessary, I think. It's, uh, it's obviously the union bears that are, that are wanting to make a point. Uh, they're not happy that uh, they're not allowed to display this banner. Um, Rangers not happy with the, uh, the, the, the content of said banner. Uh, their absence yesterday, did, that, uh, did you notice that? that them not being there in the Brimlone? We should obviously just say that that's um, a friend of the show, Chris Jack, uh, is the one that is reporting um, his report last night about the about the nature of the banner. Um, and just to kind of give both sides, Derek, um, just got the union bears, what they said on Twitter. Um, they said that they planned to display various legitimate message banners highlighting different issues surrounding the club and support, but saw Police Scotland and Rangers FC jointly remove these materials without our knowledge and black, uh, block access to regular matchday materials. Uh, Rangers, in an earlier statement, said they'd refused to allow an offensive banner relating to the police service to be displayed um, and that the union bears elected to absent themselves from the stadium because the club would not permit this offensive anti police banner at display. So, yeah, important to obviously read out, um, read that out there to just kind of give context to it. Uh, but on the topic of were, were they was the noise missed? Yeah, I think absolutely it was. It was kind of a, a bit of a flat afternoon anyway because I think in these games, if you don't go and score goals early, like Rangers did against Kilmarnock they become a bit of a, I put in my piece, a bit of a poison chalice because it's just the moment, minutes ticking down until you get a goal. Um, and in a way, you can't really have huge positives out of these games unless you go and blow the opposition away. So, yeah, yeah, yeah that kind of lack of atmosphere um, certainly certainly didn't help it. Um, and, and it wasn't until, kind of, I think, 42 minutes that Rangers managed to, to break the deadlock. So hopefully something that, that's uh, resolved because these home games, I, th I think going forward, as we kind of touched on at the top of the show, it's a difficult thing to combat when teams come in and play in this way. You need as many 
um, weapons as possible, which is why set pieces, as we saw against Kilmarnock, if they can break the deadlock and force the opposition team, I know Wraith didn't, but force the opposition teams to come out a little bit more, um, then perhaps you have that space to go and play into because Rangers are obviously going to have to play so many of these types of games per season and, and the main kind of, I guess, the main job of a Rangers manager domestically um, week out, week in, week out, is trying to to, to beat that and uh, get the required goal threat to do that, which Beal has done to this point so far. Uh, to, to to be fair to him, yesterday was just I think a slower game for a kind of multitude of factors uh, as we've outlined. And the third game in a week without many changes to the starting eleven, which maybe comes into it slightly as well. Yeah, well, they have a full week of preparation now uh, ahead of Motherwell uh, at the weekend uh, on Saturday. But progression. Uh, was the, the, the name uh, of, of the game really at this stage uh, of the, the competition and of course Rangers in that last four draw where they'll play either Celtic, uh, Inverness, Caledonian Thistle who did well to beat uh, Kilmarnock yeah. on Friday night and tonight's game is it, am I right in thinking it's uh, Falkirk Air United Joshua is that, is that you right? are yeah um, you are right in thinking that so that I think that was the final in 2015 Falkirk Inverness because I was yeah, there Falkirk, and... Falkirk Inverness yeah sorry that's yeah. what I mean the, the, if, if Falkirk were to make it through uh, that was the final in 2015 so yeah interesting to see obviously two sides outside the, the kind of top flight in the in the hat um, but another trip to, to Hamden for Rangers and this competition I don't think the significance of it can be understated Derek because if Rangers go and win the Scottish Cup similar conversation actually to what we had last year a number of players will be coming to the end of their time at the club and they'll want to, to finish um, and be remembered um, in obviously a positive light. If Rangers were to go and lose another cup, I just think it would be so detrimental going into next season. So I think there's huge pressure on this, but that's just that's just the, the result of, I, I think, playing for a, for a club like Rangers and the demands to, to win when the Scottish Cup is the only domestic cup they've won in you know such a number of years, so many years, sorry. Yeah, Finn Fogel says uh, Inverness in the semi and air in the final uh, will do me. I think you get uh, good odds in the Air United reaching uh, the final, that's for sure. But who knows? Uh, everyone at this stage of the competition will have uh, dreams that they can go on and, and win the trophy. Rangers hopefully will be retaining that trophy that they won uh, last season. Those semi final matches, incidentally, will take place at the weekend of the 29th and 30th of April, and the draw will take place uh, uh, immediately after. Uh, the match this evening. I think Colin Hendry, former uh, Rangers defender, uh, conducting the draw. So hopefully uh, he gives us a, a favourable one at that as well. Um, OK, that'll do us there. Thanks to everyone for getting in touch with the programme. It's greatly appreciated. Just a reminder, if you want to take advantage of the website just now, now's the time to do it. Just £2 for two months worth of content. Head over to rangersreview.co.uk forward slash subscribe for all the details. Plenty coming your way on the website. As I mentioned, Joshua writing a piece uh, on what Michael Beale's words on Morelos mean, uh, so you can uh, dig into that uh, a little later on. Uh, but we'll be back again tomorrow. I think it may be myself and uh, perhaps Johnny or Josh will, will keep you will keep you on tenter hooks for that. But until then, uh, enjoy the rest of your Monday. Bye for now.